So hello and welcome to another Friday video. So I'd mentioned in my videos earlier in the week, at least one, where I was sort of considering what to do on Friday. And uh, as a consequence, I went through my Shards of Alara binder. And yeah, there was plenty of really interesting artwork to look at. So this is, uh, for good or bad, uh, another week of, of artwork from the set. Um, so uh, I'll have to... Um, do an alternate video that's non-magic related at some point in the future. Um, I've been looking ahead as well to, to the Conflux artwork and I think I might find myself in the same boat with that where there's just um, such uh, such lovely artwork to look at that um, yeah I, I, I think this way it's going to go on a Friday so for the moment just expect Friday's video to primarily be the artwork for the the set um, for that week and then if I get time I might throw in an additional non-magic the gathering video but uh, I think I'm, I'm going to go down this magic artwork rabbit hole for for a while longer and looking at the figures uh, based on the number of people that watch the video I get actually out of all the the three videos I do during the week, this is the one I get the highest amount of videos for, so I might as well keep with it. So you can see on camera here I've got a nice foil blightening. Um, I had mentioned when I was doing this, I think the same Musings video, that there was um, a number of boosters released, was it their own little thing the Wizards did after the block had come out where they release these all foil boosters um, and for some reason there was a period several years ago where you could actually pick these up quite cheap for some reason so I, so I got hold of some at the time and um, I can't even remember if I opened them on camera anyway but I, I managed to pull a foil bl blightening out of there I didn't I didn't um, I didn't get many packs, so I just got one of these. And I've got a few other cards here from that particular, those boosters. I just picked out all the, uh, well not all of them, but some of the interesting foil Shards of Alara cards that were in those boosters. Obviously it had foil cards from the other sets in there. But I just picked, picked a handful. So that's Blightning. Um, I wanted to see what Scavenger Drake look like the foil for that because it looked pretty cool in the binder but I'm not too sure I think most of the foiling seems to be the background so but an interesting card I don't think I really talked about this in the in the set so it's a flying one one but whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from play you may put a plus one plus one counter on scavenger drake so you can imagine a multiplayer game where stuff's dying, as long as this isn't dying, um, that could uh, could start to get large. Of course, you'd have to find some way to probably protect it. But uh, yeah, so I was more really interested in the, f the foiling to see what it would look like. What's interesting is the foiling on this does something different. It makes almost makes the non-foil part really pop which is often the reverse of what you normally get I wanted to see what the cancel looked like as well because you know the, the foiling is around that sort of explosive light there and I actually managed to pull in the boosters um, four out of the five t um, colors of mana obviously there was um, artwork was it four pieces of artwork per mana um, so again it's a little bit random but these are foil basic lands from Shards of Alara And I'm just going to try and catch them on the camera in the light. There's a nice 
nice mountain. I can't tell in the background. See where the foiling is now? I don't know if you can see that. It's difficult to tell whether that's just the outside of a cloud or there's actually some lightning in there as well. So yeah, that's the foil stuff. So I was going to go through, because I, I, because they were at Common, um, I do have one each of the panoramas. So there's the band. Oh yeah. We've got the jammed one, which looks really cool up close. And Grixis. It's cool because when you see them this close, they do start to take on quite a different form to them. You can start to see the depth a little bit better, I think anyway. And then the Esper panorama. And if you remember from set musings, all of these were the same template. You tapped them for one colourless, or you could pay a colourless, tap them, sacrifice them, and go and search out the appropriate colours of shards based on the particular panorama. In terms of three colours, there were also those cycle of common obelisks. So three to cast, then you tap them. And you could generate the uh, appropriate uh, colour for the different shard. So here's the Esper one. There's Grixis. Obelisk of Junt. The Nile one's pretty nice. Shame I don't have a foil version of that actually. Good to check out. And then the, the band one. You can start to see a little bit more detail in the sky there. And then what I thought I'd do, I just went through my set binder. Like I said, I don't think I opened a ton of these. I might have. I may well have opened, I don't know, about six boosters and then maybe a tournament pack, perhaps. Maybe slightly more than that. So I've got a mixed bag in here. You'll see some of the souls, uh, the three souls in here, but also a few other bits and pieces that I just thought the artwork was really interesting or maybe it was a rare that I pulled. So I won't specifically look at the, the rules text unless I think it, it warrants it. I definitely wanted to take a look at Oblivion Ring. This particular piece of artwork for it. I did manage to uh, open a mythic I imagine that would look pretty nice if you managed to open a foil one. And there's a few other like non-mythic rares here. There's a smattering of angels in the set, I think, generally. And then I wanted to just get up close because sometimes with the Ethereum sculpture it's actually quite difficult to tell what that is. And of course this is the one, when we looked at the, uh, the ones that are popular in EDH, it uh, reduces your artifact spells. So uh, from that perspective, pretty popular card from the set. I've always liked this one. It's another regular rare. Gather specimens. So if you're not 
not familiar with it. If a creature would come into play under an opponent's control this turn, it comes into play under your control instead. It's quite a creepy looking one. That's one of the heralds. There was one that went out and searched for a specific creature, if you remember. There was a cycle of those. While we're on the creepy cards, Vain Drinker. Another one of the souls. This is Souls Fire. Keeper of Progenitus. There were a number of these cards that um, you know cared about the the combination of of a shard. Not necessarily a cycle, but just sort of uh, spread throughout the set on different cards. His souls might. You got a nice hindering light. I've always, always liked the artwork on this. And we did have a foil. I did open up some foils here and there in the regular packs because obviously you were going to get a certain amount of foils. I don't know whether it's one in six or one in eight. I can never remember at that point. So this was. Yeah, one of the charms, the Esper one, and that was a foil I was lucky enough to, to pull in a regular booster. I think I've only got three out of the five charms. There's the Grixis one, and then the Jund one. Angel, Stoic Angel, Stoic, sorry, Stoic Angel. Oh, some ultimatums. So we've got brilliant ultimatum. Now, to me, that looks really cool, actually, on the on the screen on on this um, camcorder I'm recording on. So hopefully, if you manage to watch this on a large screen, I'm obviously recording this at 1080. Uh, that should look pretty cool, I reckon. Um, Clarion Ultimatum. And a few more to go. Violent Ultimatum. Yep, some artifacts. We've got a nice quieter spike there. And good old relic of progenitus. So there we have it. That's uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that look through the artwork of um, from my binders for Shards of Alara. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now.